Well, career coach and all-around spitfire, Lindsay Picardo is with us to talk emotional intelligence. Good morning. That's right, Tracy. Good morning. I'm excited to be here to talk about this. It's a very important subject to be covering. This, I'm a little, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> we are doing a test live on <laughs> oh, the air. Oh, yeah. Here we go. No. All right. What, but really, emotional let's... intelligence, it's the ability to recognize what you're thinking and feeling and see that in other people, too, and be able to maneuver through that. And when you think about your career, we all say, like, I want to be the best. I want to be the best architect. I want to be the best dentist. I want to be the best teacher. And the piece that we sometimes miss is this concept of emotional intelligence. And ironically, this is the breaker for most of us when it comes to success. When we look at research around why people lose their jobs, mm -hmm. the majority of the time, it's because of their attitude, not because of their competency or their ability to do the task. Oh, okay. So why? someone who doesn't, who isn't moving up professionally or maybe has lost a job, there's a, but no, but my, 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 I did this, I did this. They're checking boxes of accomplishment, but not about the, the, the relationships and the give and take. That's exactly it. It's like that old phrase, like, did not play well with others. Right. Okay. <laughs> That's what gets you stuck. And so I wanted to share today four ways that you can start to raise your self-awareness and your IQ. Please. Okay. The first one is this. When we're listening to somebody else, especially at work, you can do this with your kids too. Think about, am I listening to really understand their position and where they're coming from, or am I just kind of waiting to get my words out too and, and not really stopping to listen? That's the first one. Listening is huge with awareness. The second one is reflect on the criticisms you've received. I, I have gotten my fair share of criticisms, and there is a pattern to them. It usually has to do something about, like, being a bull in a china shop, right? For me, okay. <laughs> If I get negative feedback, it's usually like, that was a bit, a bit much, Picardo, you know? And so I have to be really mindful of that. So even if your feelings are hurt and it feels like, oh, that was kind of hard feedback to get, there probably is a pattern there and that you can actually take a look at and learn about who you are. And so now I embrace, okay, I've got a huge personality. What am I going to do with it? I don't have to be a bull in a china shop, but I'm aware that that can get in the way in certain circumstances. So that's two. Number three practice assuming the best about someone if there was ever a time to practice it it would be now wow. especially you know if there's something that kind of irritates you gets under your skin they probably have a very different backstory they've got a different personality than you a different worldview a different upbringing practice believing and assuming the best it will help lower your stress well i would also think it would help with you're you're going to be you're going to be critical of somebody and their performance based nothing on the performance because they irritate you or something. So you, they're not getting exactly. the benefit of the doubt on what they're doing or accomplishing or doing for you because you've already had this preconceived notion that it's probably not as good as, you, as it is because you don't like the person. That's exactly it. And then this last one is what we call HALT. Check in and see if you're hungry, if you're angry, if you're lonely or tired. Those four things change the way that we approach conversations all the time. You know what that's like when you're hangry you're hungry and you're angry and your blood sugar's dropping and you barely can pay attention. Check in on yourself before you walk into team meetings, even if it's virtual. Take five minutes, take care of yourself, make sure that you're in a good place before connecting to other people. That one is huge. I'm sure that if you were to do even one of these four, you would see things start to shift on your team or in your family. I hope that people maybe consider doing one of these for themselves. I've actually told my children not to bring up anything contentious to me uh, an hour before I go to bed because <laughs> yes, you're not going to get you're not going to get full dad. You're going to you're going to get uh, you're going to get uh, the T in halt in that one. That's exactly it. See, you've got it. You you passed the test, the emotional intelligence test. You got oh, it. I don't know about that because <laughs> let's go back to that first one. Pause when listen. I'm getting better at it, but I am a notorious one upper. Like, mm -hmm. and I've learned to recognize, like, no, d like, li listen to what this person's saying and don't be prepared to whatever their story, whatever their story is to do, to tell a better one or whatever. Let them have the moment. Just be quiet. I've also learned this on social media. Just because I'm <laughs> thinking something doesn't mean I have to say it or tweet it out. So let it, let the things right. stand the way they are. Let other people shine. That's it. You nailed it. Okay. Now I, now I think maybe I passed. <laughs> Yes. Good to talk to you as always. Appreciate your perspective. LindsayBicardo.com. We'll put the link on IndyStyle.tv. Stay safe. Have a good rest of the week.